Well, good morning, great people of God. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all of our beautiful children of the Most High God. Well, today is day 29. It's day 29 of our 40 days of prayer and fasting, and we should be getting stronger each and every day. Every day ought to be a brand new experience for us as we seek to get closer to God. And as we seek to get closer to God, he ought to open up our eyes to see things that we have not seen before. He ought to open our ears to things we've not heard before and our hearts to be open to feel those things we've not felt before because we are getting closer to God each and every day. Today, on day 29, we are praying for our local, state, and national leaders. We're praying for our local, state, and national leaders. In 1 Timothy, <coughs> in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, the Apostle Paul, writing to his young son, Timothy, in the ministry, says, I urge them, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. God calls us to pray for our leaders, that we would that they would submit to his leadership for the sake of God's will being done and for the advancement of his everlasting kingdom. As followers of Jesus Christ, we need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for them now more than ever because they are faced with so many difficult decisions and we do not want the enemy to lead them. We want God to lead them because we know that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we're going to seek God on behalf of our leaders. Our prayer directive is to pray that God will give our, our leaders wisdom to make wise decisions and to be able to govern with integrity to be able to govern with justice and be able to govern with mercy. And in our response to God, we need to seek the Lord for a desire for pray for all of our leaders, even the ones who we disagree with. And I know that that can be difficult to do, but God calls us to be peacemakers and not peace breakers. And we need to be able to pray for folks even when we don't agree with them or agree with their political agenda. What would it look like if the entire body of Christ began to lift up each elected leader that we had in prayer? How might God break our hearts and and fill us with love and give us a burden for them if we simply started to pray. The Bible says, the Lord foils the plans of the nation. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples, but the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. Lord, we come to you now in the name of Jesus, knowing that in the midst of this time, in all of the things that we are experiencing here within the leadership of our country, within the leadership of our state, and within the leadership of our cities, that you still have a kingdom purpose. Lord, you have brought our country to its knees. This pandemic has taken over the entire world. You see this battle with Ukraine and and the battle with Russia has taken over and mesmerized the world. But right now what you are doing is you are bringing your people to their knees so that they may look to you. It may have been a surprise to us, but nothing was a surprise to you because God, we know that you see the big picture and you are at work in all ways, even when we cannot see. So right now we're asking you to guide the direction of our country so that the things that our country does is, is needed and necessary to advance 
your kingdom. We pray for our president and ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you give the president and his council divine wisdom so that they might be able to lead this country. We pray that our president would serve and would reverence you in words and in actions and in deeds. Lord, we ask that you will grant him grace to that he can be able to unify our country and be peacemakers and not peace breakers. Lord, order his step. Let him not succumb to the things that are coming and pressing on this world and to political agenda, but let him submit to you. We're facing immense challenges right now, Lord. Look at our public health, Lord. It's in a challenge. The pandemic has left us in a challenge. Wars have left us with many challenges, financial hardships, economic shutdowns, racial tension, devastation from violence in the streets, and great political division have divided our country and our president and this cabinet faces fierce challenges in opportunities to be able to glorify you. So we pray that you will grant our president divine wisdom to navigate our country through the uncertain path that lies ahead because we know that you are in control. We pray for the vice president. We pray for the cabinets and the advisors to the president. The Bible, Lord, and, and the Bible is full of examples of, of godly men and women giving counsel to the kings. And so, Lord, we pray that you will use them to give divine wisdom to the president of this United States. We pray that you would give the, the president wisdom to surround himself with counselors who, who have our best interests at heart. Grant them wisdom and advice so that they may be able to make decisions that are pleasing to you. We pray, Lord, not only for our, our national government, but we pray for, for our, our governor right now, Lord. We pray for our governor that he will surround himself with men and women that are finding you at the heart of their inner being so that when decisions are made, they're being made by the direction of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for, for the Senate and the House of Representatives that make laws to govern our land and delegate our resources, give them wisdom to allocate their resources wisely. Raise up people who will make laws to protect our freedom so that we can live peaceably and we can live quiet in godly lives. Lord, we pray that you will be with all branches of the government because you are the righteous judge who will judge the nations. So we lift up our Supreme Court and we lift up the court systems in our state. We pray that, that they would judge rightly before you and uphold those things that are true. We pray, Lord, that you will give them balanced judgments that will uphold the Constitution and give them the divine wisdom to be able to decipher right from wrong. Lord, we pray that you will watch over the governors, the state and local officials and grant them the things that they need and the resources to be able to help during these COVID restrictions. Lord, we're dealing with so many financial crises. We're dealing with issues with law enforcement. We're dealing with racial division. And Lord, we are asking you to give them the insight into the needs of the community and give them discernment to make decisions to be able to lead and to be able to lead well. Lord, our hearts are heavy for our nation. Help us not to lose sight of the fact that, that our hope is in you. Because we know, Lord, that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. Forgive us for placing our hope in the government or placing our hope in political ideologies or placing our hope in comfort in financial security. We repent of those things, Lord, and, and, and ask that you will cleanse us and make us white as snow because our, our, our hearts will quickly wander. But by your power, teach us to live with the realization in the forefront of our minds that our citizenship is in heaven. We commit our future as a nation and as your people to your hand. And right now we pray that your will be done. 
Use us to be peacemakers and not peace breakers. Use us to be ministers of reconciliation to bring glory to your name. Lord, we love you. We adore you. We praise and we magnify your holy name. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. Today, seek the Lord for a desire to pray for the leaders that we have. Make sure you pray for them, even when you don't dis even when you don't agree with them, because we can agree to disagree without being disagreeable. This will help us as we continue our 40 days of prayer and fasting. I pray that you have a wonderful and a blessed day. Tune in again tomorrow at the same time and the same place. I love you much. Pastor T, have a blessed day.